So I'm here with the wonderful, <laughs> energetic, amazing Saidat. Uh, what, what's the... Oh, there Thank we go. Goodness. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, that's a good uh, opening for you. I played that, I think, during the, um, uh, the jam. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mary actually asked me to add that on. She's like, I think this would be a good, I think this would be a good oh, yeah. uh, vibe for the night. And I was like, yeah, you're definitely right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how are you doing today? I'm good. It's a, it's a new week. So trying to, you know, have a focus for the week and get through it and accomplish some things. I feel like uh, COVID left me in limbo a bit. So the first month I was just lost. I was so used to traveling and being on the road. I, I had to find myself again. Mm -hmm. And then the second month, all I did was eat. <laughs> <laughs> what else are you going to do, right? So <laughs> well, is this my 10th meal today? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and third month, I'm like, well, maybe I should, um, you know, find you know, my new path and figure out what I'm doing with the rest of my life. And now I'm just, you know, you know, navigating life through in that, you know, with that thought in mind, like, you know, things are going to change. I have to change with it. I can't, you know, stay stuck in this rut of, uh, you know, unprecedented times, you know, it's just like, yeah, mm. it's unknown, but every day is unknown. Every day is uh, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how life is going to change. So I just have mm -hmm. to adjust mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and, I, and be okay with not being okay some days. Mm -hmm. And and that's kind of tough for me because as you could see, I'm usually pretty happy and optimistic. And, and on the days when I don't feel that way, it's, it's, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm hard on myself. Like, Hey, why don't you get it together? You're telling everyone else to be positive and Mm -hmm. you're not <laughs> mm -hmm. practice what you preach on those walks every day you know mm -hmm. so it's being okay with like hey today's not that day I need someone to pump me up today <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah so I'm learning more about myself and about life and yeah yeah so um prior to this time and this whole thing happening one of the things that I was really burning to ask you since we met was how do you stay so, how does a person stay so I positive? Hear you for some reason. Oh, no? Hmm. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I, I hear your mic a little bit, but I don't. Uh, do you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you now. Now? Okay. Yeah. So, For some reason, it said Zoom had been has been muted. Like what? And you're oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite sure what happened there, but okay. <laughs> oh, I I didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can you repeat the question? Sorry. <laughs> yes. So I was asking prior to this happening and things like changing and everything. Um, what was your when you had your we'll get to what you do in a second but when you had yeah. your your thing before covid going on um what was regular life looking for you in terms of being positive having a positive outlook and you know i'm i'm sure there were things in your life that were going on prior to covid you know as is oh, the case yeah. with everybody right so yeah. how in those times like in the pre <laughs> you know bc before covid yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was um, what was your way of dealing with with things and is it any different than how it is now well I I love working with young people because you know children are forgiving um, children are resilient they they can go through something tough and five minutes later they're still ready to have fun and you know be optimistic about life and you, and you find that in children and because I work with children it's I seem to feed off of that energy as well mm. and so if I was having a tough morning 
I could set up our show and, and feel heartbroken about something. And as soon as the show would start, I would just look at in their beautiful faces and all those worries would just dissipate. And I just, I don't know why that happens for me, but when I'm with young people, I feel better mm -hmm. because they're, they're a little more optimistic about life. Mm -hmm. And so it <laughs> helps me remember like, Hey, you know what? Life can be good sometimes. Mm -hmm. And this is the moment to be positive for them, feed off of their positivity, uplift their spirits, it helps them feel even better so mm -hmm. they can go and deal with their own life in, in with a little more power. So I think that's something that um, helped kept me going mm -hmm. all these years. And then being at home, and of course my family is everything to me. And yeah, I'm optimistic at home, but I think I I had to learn to be Ha the happy person I am when I'm I don't have this yeah oh my yeah. gosh I know this is the best show ever yeah oh, you know what I mean yeah. you have all that praise and all that energy going the music pumping everyone's excited well it's not that hard to be optimistic in that type of environment when you're at home and you're hearing you're not essential yeah when yeah. you're thinking you'll never have an assembly again would you really think they're gonna call you back to a school like these thoughts are going through my mind at at this time mm -hmm. okay school's coming back in the fall maybe it's going to look completely different are they going to have assemblies where 500 kids are in a room at one time no mm -hmm. so what does my look like my life what's my life going to look like after covid so i better learn how to be happy Mm -hmm. and learn that um that happiness and joy and contentment comes from within mm -hmm. and i can keep that going so if i'm a virtual presenter you're going to see that same energy on a screen that you would if you were in my face clapping and telling me how wonderful i am mm -hmm. so that's i think that's what i'm learning I've, and i've you know i've taught that for so many years about being self-confident but then you know in your own personal life, you have these areas where it's like, it's been a little dark. You haven't really dealt with certain things in your life. And then when it's exposed, you're like, whoa, mm -hmm. uh, I thought I had that together. And oh, I yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's what I've been learning. I've been learning like, hey, you're not as confident as you think you are. Yeah. But you can be. You can learn and grow just like you're encouraging everyone else to do. So yeah but yeah so that's that's i mean pre-covid i was confident but i think i also relied heavily on my crowd mm -hmm. because i had to be mm -hmm. therefore it became part of me but maybe some aspect of that was just you know for the show mm -hmm. not really dealing with maybe some of those deeper hurts and pains you know like i've I've dealt with a, a lot of different issues in my life and some of them are so heartbreaking. Some of them are stressful. Like I have a child, um, well, Christina, I have a child that has autism and he's more on the severe end of the spectrum, mm. nonverbal. He also has a uh, developmental delay. So, you know, life is not very easy for us trying to, you know, get him through life. So you get home and you're excited and he may not be happy that day mm -hmm. and he can't tell you what's going on. So you're, okay, what's going on? Let's watch his, his body language. Let's try to talk to him and watch this face. Mm. <laughs> and yeah. then he'll smile. Um, sometimes children with autism, they, they um, mimic what you do. Mm. It's like a mirroring, like, it's like echo echolalia I think they call it I'm probably not pronouncing it properly but like if you say something um if they're nonverbal, sometimes they'll try to repeat the last word you say um any of your body movements they they mirror that as well and so you know sometimes it's frustrating or disheartening and you know just you know just learning just learning how to deal with my own emotions on my own personal life versus what I do for a living. It's been, you know, mm. it's a journey. 
Oh, oh yeah. 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 Were you aware of any of that things as, as far as it pertains to you, like your self-confidence, your uh, acceptance of certain things about yourself or in your life? Were you aware of this zone that existed before all of this, or was this the turning point? Um, I, I'm sure that I, I, I have been aware of it, or maybe I've ignored some aspects of it because mm. I thought, you know, when I was growing up, I was, I, I, I had low self-esteem. I didn't believe in myself. I was, I was critical of everything I, that I did or anything that people would say to me, I would take it to heart. And mm. I felt like I conquered that over the years, mm. but then during COVID, I realized that for the past 15 years, I've invested in my show of positivity and it is real to me. It is who I am, but I didn't deal with the fact, I didn't deal with the issues of when I'm not feeling this way, that mm -hmm. I need to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. I, I seem to be harder on myself when I'm not happy, when I'm discouraged, instead of just learning to go with the flow. Like, mm -hmm. hey, it's okay to feel this way. You tell kids every day, it's okay to talk about how you feel. Well, mm -hmm. then why am I not okay with myself? Mm -hmm. Why am I not okay expressing, man, I'm, I'm feeling defeated. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I started a series on, on, on my Instagram called Off the Couch because I was feeling so defeated. And I was just sitting on the couch and as I told you, 10 meals a day. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm like, I got to get off this couch, <laughs> right? And so I started the series for, for myself to get myself off the couch, but to encourage other people. Mm -hmm. And I, I think with motivational speakers and entertainers, we get so used to just making everything about our audience mm -hmm. that sometimes we have to take that same material and just sit with it. For ourselves as if we someone's talking to us like we need to have this out-of-body experience where we're we're sitting we're listening to ourselves say hey are you really getting what you're saying mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's so good it's great material but if you're not applying it to your life yeah this is this There's is a problem. just for show yeah, yeah so so I, I think I think that's something that uh, motivational speakers especially have to just you know reflect on every once in a while. Yeah. It's not something it's not something that you're faking. It's it's nothing like that. I just think you just get in this routine of being on all the yeah. time. Yeah. I'm here. I'm cheering you on. You can learn from me, but I haven't taken any refresher courses yeah <laughs> you know like yeah. hey i need to sit down for a bit and and be inspired and be encouraged by others mm -hmm. and, and know it's okay you know to to realize that you don't have it all together mm -hmm. so what's your process like when you do that when you have to sit down and have a little refresher or like a recharge for yourself what do you do i, I usually cry <laughs> The first cleanse, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I I love uh, I love going for walks. That that really helps me clear my mind. Mm -hmm. Um, I I find when I stay at home, I I just get too um busy thinking about my son. For example, he is he has a lot of needs, and so it you just become um kind of. <sighs> overwhelmed with like what what should I do with him now where before like he had a PSW he was in school so there were other people contributing to his well-being mm -hmm. and now it's you know it's, it's me <laughs> Christina uh, my partner she's working and so she's not home um, for many hours of the day so it's just me and Isaiah. So if I'm here, I'm not really thinking about how to take care of myself. I'm thinking mm -hmm. about what's next for him. Mm -hmm. So when I go for a walk, it helps me clear my mind. It's just me. And I'm able to, you know, reflect on, hey, side out, what's going on? What mm -hmm. can you, how can you improve this situation? Um, I love writing. So I, I write, a, I have a lot of dirt. I have a lot of notebooks mm -hmm. and they, and to anyone 
<laughs> if I if I was if I shared them with anyone, they they couldn't make any sense of anything that I'm writing. But you know, I just I have a thought and I just open the notebook. It doesn't matter what part of that notebook it is. I'm just writing notes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like where did I put that? Oh, it's in the middle of the notebook. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, so I like writing. Um, music, of course, moves me, and mm. I love dancing. Mm. So these are things that help me kind of you know reset <clears throat> and and be able to move forward or, you know, move through those emotions. Excuse me. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I definitely share with you the, uh, the love for writing and dancing and just movement. Um, yeah. I find uh, sometimes when I'm feeling like I have a lot built in inside and especially if it's a lot of negative energy, or stress or something that's heavy dancing mm. just helps release it so much yeah. you know so much I, I've started telling my mom you know I'm I'm gonna go outside and just dance for a little bit yeah <laughs> you know and I'm not a dancer you know like I'm not a trained dancer at all so to her that's that, okay you know it is it is to her she might be like what do you mean what you dance <laughs> what do you <laughs> do <laughs> And, yeah. but it's, it's, and that's only something very new to me, um, yeah. to, to do that as a kind of release or as a kind of therapy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the dance, like no one's watching, no one is watching right now. So it's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Cause I, I remember when I was younger, I'd feel like whenever I would do something like that, like dance or, or move around, I'd start to feel self-conscious even though mm. I'm by myself. Yep. You know, you're, you're so not yeah. used to being this isolated, right? Yeah. Or this sure. alone. <laughs> Even someone who's an introvert like myself, you know, I'm still not used to being really, really in my own space and really, really alone. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I hear you with all that time to think about what's going on here and here and, you know, in realizing a lot of things about yourself. Yeah. I was just thinking to this to myself yesterday that, you know, it's, I've never had so much time to really think about what is actually important to me, right? With so much being kind of like taken away or put on, on pause for a little bit yeah. or more than just the work that we do, right? Or more than just mm, the job that we good. show up to yeah. every day. And I feel yeah. like, you know, you had kind of the same realization in a real, like, I don't want to say extreme, but in a real heavy level, because yeah. your change was so, was a huge shift, right? Oh, yes. And it's interesting, the, the last school we performed at before the lockdown, it was, I, I feel like it was the uh, show of my dreams. Every person in the room was so happy. Mm. There were 600 kids in this in this room and in, in the gym dancing the teachers were excited and it was just it was the best day I've, I've had in a very long time in, mm. in my um, performances mm. and right after the show we receive a call from um, the London Public Library your show has been canceled the one at Wolf Due performance the lockdown one. yeah yeah, and wow. and it was it you know it was just it wow. was a it was a real blow right you're just like <laughs> whoa what yeah. and and then they're like and you're going on lockdown for three weeks jeez wait what <laughs> and at yeah. that time like March 13th it was kind of like what a lockdown okay, yeah well, okay isn't yeah. that just happening in the states yeah. And just a week prior, all, you know, all these, all that, you know, fake news or myths that, oh, COVID doesn't affect black people and children. <laughs> I was hoping so much that that would be true, by the way. I was like, oh, please, please <laughs> let that be true. <laughs> yeah, but silly me was, was like telling that to all my friends. Oh, yeah, by the way, I don't have to worry about <laughs> Melanation for the protection. <laughs> oh, yeah. My Lord. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm good, but you know. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll Still gotta be all, careful. 
<laughs> I'll enjoy this lockdown, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and so it was, I was just like, wait, what? This is real. Why is this affecting me? And, you know, all of a sudden you realize, oh, you do have a little, you have some selfish tendencies. You don't realize it when you think mm. you're such a selfless person. Mm. And then you start thinking about, like, I'm not even thinking about the world right now. You took away my mm. show. I've been working <laughs> on this for two years. What do you mean? We had sold out performances. Oh, what? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so we're, we're locked, on lockdown for three weeks. Oh, wait, we were completely booked until um, September. Yeah. For the first time in 15 years. Wow. First time in 15 years, we didn't have to worry about our bookings until the fall. Yeah. Wow. And summers are usually our drought months, right? Because after, after, you know, the summer, when summer vacation hits, we don't get a lot of bookings. But for the first time in my career, we were completely booked. I was so excited. I'm like, hey, we are moving forward. This is great. People are starting to recognize my gifts and value that I bring to the community. Lockdown. Mm. Okay, three weeks. I can handle three weeks. No big deal. Oh, wait. Another four weeks? And then all of a sudden, I start receiving these emails. Cancellation. Cancellation. Mm. The last email I received that said all of my events for the city um, had been canceled until the fall, that's when I lost it. And I'm mm. just like crying and I didn't know what to do. And, you know, and so it was, it was, it was a tough, it was a tough, you know, it was a tough one for a while. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, it was rolling too for so long. You, you had a, yeah. a period where it was just complete uncertainty. Yeah. And then... And then things were like, okay, this is not going to be for three weeks or, you know, a month. This is, we're in month five right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. yeah, no, I, I can, I can't imagine yep. how tough that'd be. You know, you feel like you've reached this pivotal moment, but, uh, you know, and then it gets taken away from you by things that are just totally out of everybody's control and yep. there's no knowing what it's going to look like after so true but um i think the bright side of this which i almost feel bad calling it a bright side but the bright side of this is that whenever this is over people are going to be needing somebody like you you know in all yeah. walks of life and work and school and public sector you know yeah. they're, they're going to be needing somebody with the skills and with the motivation, you know, and, and the, the firmness in being positive and in being, um, you know, a, a yeah. vehicle for the self to move forward. Yeah. Right. Well, it, you know, it's, and it's something I've, I've learned through this is to really trust your intuition. Mm. Six months before the lockdown, mm -hmm. I was talking to my partner and I said, Christina, I have this idea. I'm not sure how it will work, but I feel like we need to build a set and have live streaming of our assemblies for schools that aren't able to afford it mm. or they, they have a, a very limited budget or we can't reach them because we can't travel that far with their type of budget. And so it would still be personal because they would sign in. Um, and, and I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm of the generation where, you know, we have to learn everything that has to do with technology. So I was like, <laughs> I don't know how to live stream this, blah, 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 you know, cause I'm 48. Right. So it, it's just, and looking I great. was like, Oh no, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, I, I see us like doing a live stream of our assemblies and then I can hire dancers to be like our, my backup. And it's just like a Sesame street, mm. but it doesn't matter where they are mm -hmm. and they can sign up. And so I'm talking to them as if I'm at their school, but I'm not there, but they can all enjoy it. And she's like, I don't know how this will work. And so she's, she's wow. um, saying, well, how can this work? And how are we going to get people to actually think this is okay right and why would they pay for something like that i'm like i don't know i just think we should you know try wow. to figure it out well 
Now, that's all busy. you're going to want now. Yeah. yeah, we got busy and I didn't prepare. And as soon as I realized that this lockdown was for an extended amount of time, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, remember that? Remember that yeah. idea I had I couldn't have been working on? <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's interesting mm -hmm. how the universe will actually start giving you little hints that change is coming. But a lot of times we get so like set in our ways Mm -hmm. or we are we think oh things are fine right now i'm not going to change or try to pivot what's our what's working well for me right now mm -hmm. and i think um, especially through this um pan in this pandemic we're realizing that we need to prepare for anything mm -hmm. we need to trust our intuition mm -hmm. and we need to educate ourselves instead of just relying on what people say mm -hmm. or going to just one news source mm -hmm. and just like, Hey, well, they said this, so it must be true. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, haven't you found that you can ask about what are the restrictions for COVID um, when you go out into the community? <laughs> There's so many conflicting oh, yeah. <laughs> ideas there out there. Oh, You're yeah. like, what? Well, I thought they said only 10 people. Wait, and why are we doing it this way? Why is the gym closed, but I can go to Costco? Um, yeah. I don't get it. You know, <laughs> it's so frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, it's just like you have to educate yourself. You have to, you, you have to just follow your intuitions and you, and you just have to really know you have to be ready for anything. Mm -hmm. And, and, it, and it's funny. It's, it's, you know, it's off-putting sometimes when you have to know that you don't always know what you're up against or what you're going to face, mm -hmm. but be ready. Mm -hmm. and, and there's so many people that can help you get there. There's mm -hmm. like, a, you can educate yourself online. You can find the people that you, you can relate to and identify with and, and pull from their strength mm -hmm. and then strengthen yourself and move forward. So kind of what I'm learning <laughs> mm -hmm. through all of this so mm -hmm. yeah and you know we see the positive side of change right yeah. now because I think everyone is moving towards change because we don't really have a choice don't you know, have a choice that's right <laughs> you don't have a choice even you could be resisting it hard and, and still be forced into it yeah and I think for the first time like I was somebody who always See, this is, some, this is kind of an example of what we were saying earlier. I was somebody who always was telling other people that change is good. You know, change is a good thing. You should be excited about change. You should be, you know, I know it's hard and this and that, but overall change is a good thing. <clears throat> but when things started happening with the lockdown and um, more and more people were moving to online ways of doing things, kind of regardless of what it was, I um, and using dig different digital platforms to do things, uh, especially in, in like in music and in my field. You know, I realized how resistant I was to that and how resistant I had been acting mm -hmm. to that, you know, yeah, where I, I, I waited, agree. you know, like you were saying, I waited kind of this whole time to not <laughs> adopt any of those platforms or adopt any of those, you know, places to use to connect with people who you want to connect with and no. now I've kind of I've really shifted because for me the things that I was sitting on and the way of being that I was sitting on was really like based on this kind of better than thou you know moral bs right it was it was uh. just like a, a total front um a holier than thou type of thing but you know now I'm just like it's not a loss at all uh, to, to accept something that was new to you or doesn't quite mesh with the way that you think things should be done. Um, you know, and for me, it's kind of like a two fronted thing. For one thing, it's the more practical thing to do because it's where people are moving, you know, so you have to yep. either you have to catch up or be left behind. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> And then the other side of that is to actually, I've actually shifted my way of thinking about a lot of these platforms too, where I'm like, it doesn't have to be a negative thing. Why am I seeing it as something that's detrimental to the bigger vision that I have or detrimental to the well-being of, you know what I mean, artists and um, other folks like, like myself? 
in some cases they are right but there are alternatives there are alternatives to the bigger um mainstream maybe more monopolizing platforms um right because one thing that i've realized is that i'm not alone in my way of thinking in so many ways and this has been very comforting Mm -hmm. you know it's been very comforting to not feel like the exception when it comes to values that i have and i think it has to do with so much more being shifted online on social media on the internet in in a more public and very accessible space people have shifted their writing their um their motivational speaking right they're they're speaking their work just whatever work that they do they've all moved it to an online totally accessible free platform and many voices have kind of emerged out of different corners to and and if you're lucky you know you come across things which really resonate with you and and people who do work that resonates a lot with you and you know you build sort of this digital community and um like you were saying and and that's what we really want is community we want people that we can grow with and we can move forward with and improve our (laughs) improve our lives in in some shape or form right so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and learn from yeah right and i was talking to a friend of mine yesterday about traveling and she was saying uh what I liked about it was that we weren't sitting there being like, oh, you know, we're never going to be able to travel again. Like it, <laughs> it was just, we were just saying about what traveling brings us in terms of adding another dimension to who we are as human beings, right? If, if you're lucky mm-hmm. enough to have had that experience traveling to different places, no matter where or how many places, uh, if you spend enough time in a certain place and you actually witness things that happen in that area, in that region, in that culture that are different from your own, uh, it does add sort of another dimension to who you are or another layer of understanding of how the world breathes. Uh, And I feel that this is sort of what's happening now too. You know, it's not always positive. We got to definitely say that. Um, Sometimes it's more stress inducing than it is relieving. (laughs) to be honest. Um, One thing I've definitely struggled with is with this whole outpour of people putting up their work and showing, you know, different accolades and accomplishments and collaborations that they do. I'm sitting here and I'm going like, well, I'm not doing any of that. You know, I'm not, I'm not making (laughs) that kind of move. Yeah. Right. It's that comparison game. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I hear you. I mean, I, some days I, I think I, I have a plan and then the next day you're like, oh, they're way ahead of me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to lose my spot. And I think it's like we have to think of it like we felt we feel like this even in, before COVID. Mm-hmm. You go to an event and you see whoever like for, for myself, um, all these children's entertainers. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh man, their branding is so amazing. I don't know how I'm ever going to catch up with that. I can't <laughs> copy it, I, but I, I have to figure out what, what's my brand. And then you, you get so um, overwhelmed with trying to, to be ahead of whoever you're comparing yourself to, mm-hmm. that you don't realize that you can take those steps and you'll get there when you need to get there. Exactly. And you, you know, the tortoise and the hare story, I mean, it makes so much sense. Um, if you think about it, like we see people speeding past us, but we, like in actuality, are they speeding or are, do we just have it in our mind that they're way ahead? Yeah. But they're going to get tired. <laughs> yeah. I think you, uh, you cut out for a second, at least for me. Oh no. hey oh you're back oh okay i was just writing to you (laughs) my internet cut out i was like "Ah." oh okay (laughs) yeah but i'm happy you're back (laughs) 
So um, you were talking about the tortoise and the hare scenario. Yeah, it's, it's like we we always feel like people are speeding past us and we feel like we are just taking these small steps and moving like molasses, flowing like molasses and you're like, oh, I'm never going to get there. Yeah. But if we actually could have this really cool card, I like I like I, I could see it in my mind because I love cartoons, right? We're watching someone speed ahead. Someone is watching you speed forward. Mm-hmm. We all have someone we're comparing our life to that we feel has arrived. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, you cut out again. Okay. The way that you're going to that that's the only way that you're not going to progress. But if you are, if you have your vision, and if you keep looking ahead, you're, you're going to be able to see that progress, right? Mm -hmm. But it's, it's hard when you're looking at everyone else and I'm for sure feeling that way when it comes to online learning and Mm -hmm. being a presenter you're looking around and all the flash and the, you know, <laughs> the branding and the graphics and then you're like, oh my goodness, I'm going to that and I can't afford it, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you need these lights, you need this type of studio, you need this type of programming and you need this laptop and hey, guess what? I lost my job, so hmm, <laughs> I need to improve <laughs> I need to pivot, but with what? So, you know, it's, mm-hmm. you know, we just have to learn how to, and it's hard to, mm-hmm. to be happy where you are on the way, or, on the way to where you're going. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. What's one thing that you've learned about your work and, and your, I guess we can call it industry? What's something that you've learned about how to, how to, how to work in your industry in this time? And, in, in this time mm-hmm. that we're in? Uh, yeah. Whether it's specific to making it in COVID or not, but just what's something that you've learned about your industry right now because of everything that's happened. Kids. I don't think kids want to be online as much as they used to anymore. Mm. If they are online, they want it to be funny. They want it to mm. be engaging. Mm-hmm. When they think of online learning, it's just like. Yeah. And, I mean, even and adults be, think that. <laughs> yeah. And, and also because their parents are overwhelmed. Like what? We weren't expecting this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. And so. For me, I I feel like what I'm learning is to educate myself. Right now, I just need to stop and listen. Mm. I need to learn how I need to present myself online to kids to be just as engaging and just as much fun as I was in person in a gym. Mm-hmm. If I just go out there and just start throwing things on online, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. I also have to think of the future. Like I don't want to do everything for free. Mm-hmm. And, and that's and that's where it's at right now. Everybody's like, hey, we just gotta put things out there, put content out there. Right. But if you don't have the end result, it's like, but this is your career. Right. And you have to value it just as much as you did when the, you say when someone would want to book you for a gig. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and oh we don't have a budget but see yeah but this this is my livelihood now I have to value myself even though I'm learning how to be a new type of presenter or a new mm-hmm. type of performer and I think especially in the music industry or children like when anything has to do with entertainment mm-hmm. <laughs> or children people sometimes don't see the value in it mm-hmm. yeah so and you mm-hmm. have to learn to value yourself. So mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, I, I do. I have a lot. I have a lot of things that I need to learn about being online. 
but I also have to remember that I still have value and worth mm -hmm. for all the years that I've put in <laughs> educating myself how to work with kids and how to engage them and how to help them understand a positive, like a message that they need for their life skills as far as emotional and um, social intelligence. Mm -hmm. And when the fall rolls around and they're um, in some of them, <clears throat> sorry, are going to have days of online learning, I will be a special guest. Mm -hmm. So I have to say, how much am I going to, how much, how do I value that compared to when a school wants me to be that type of presenter online? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, I have to start, I have to start thinking about that just like I did when I started my, my school's performances. Oh, the first five years. I did so many free shows. Wow. Trying to get exposure. Yeah. And you know, that's what they tell you. Oh, well, if you, and any performer has that, you know, oh, if you do this for us, there'll be so many people that will see what you're doing. And, you know, that's when your career will start. Okay. You drive hours to an event. The people they promised would be there aren't there. <laughs> <laughs> they mm. don't write you a referral mm. and now you're doing another free show in the same area the following week so I mean but that was my mistake I'm sure a lot of people are doing that I just I had to learn to value myself and that was one thing I feel like I've conquered like I value what I I, I value what I bring to the table mm -hmm. I value the the um the happiness and the joy that I bring to my presentations so now people are seeing that as well if I don't see myself who else is going to see me mm -hmm. like Michelle Michelle Obama there's an incredible quote from her um, documentary Becoming and I wrote it down so I could um, share it with you it, she says you've got to find the tools within yourself to feel visible and to be heard and to use your voice mm -hmm. Say so we cannot afford to wait for the world to be equal to start feeling seen. Yeah. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We can't that's wait. So true. And that's what I, and that's what I've learned even through all of this. It's like I can't wait for the world to see me. Mm -hmm. I have to see myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to value myself. Mm -hmm. So if I take the next three months just to sit back and learn and grow. When I do show up, mm -hmm. I see myself. I'm not waiting for anyone else to say, oh my gosh, we should have Sidet as a visual, as a virtual presenter. Mm -hmm. Like I already see the value. So you will too. And I'm learning how to promote and market myself so that you see me. Mm -hmm. But you know, mm -hmm. I see myself first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I see the value. So yeah. That's what I've learned. I've learned. I learned a lot about that, especially with children's entertainment. Mm -hmm. Because you know, it's almost like we become like the babysitters. When you're in, when you're a children's entertainer. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you'll you'll even have like I've even had some performances where they're like, oh, we just need you to watch the the, the students while we um, have our meetings. Oh. What. But the but the way but the way you're saying it it sounds like I'm the babysitter, and mm -hmm. I used to get so offended by that. But it doesn't matter what they think. Yeah, I'm still working, and it's still my gift. Mm -hmm. And so I I stop thinking about how I felt people saw what I do, because some of those thoughts were actually just self inflicted. Mm. oh you just think I'm the babysitter mm -hmm. oh you just think I'm the hip-hop girl oh mm -hmm. you just think I'm this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you you walk into school and someone says oh the hip-hop girl is here why is that offending me yeah mm -hmm. I, I do I I, I am a hip-hop artist I am a children's entertainer I am a motivational speaker why am I offended by what they're saying mm -hmm. am mm -hmm. I not valuing who I am exactly right and mm -hmm. so i think that's what i've learned so much about being in this industry and just being a performer mm -hmm. is when i see myself people value me mm -hmm. when i don't see myself in a in a great light 
it's just I, I it's almost like that energy I'm I'm actually putting out and 100%. people are <laughs> are taking it and going oh is that that's how I feel too so yeah 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 like my version of that quote which I also started to hammer into my own head because of all of this was that you have to be your own number one fan you know you have to be your most you have to be your most loyal audience member you know like you have to be the one who's pushing your message and your work and yourself out there the most you can't hope that other people are gonna love what you do and then do that for you and that'll be you know your your sign that you've made it or su- success or that'll be what gets you the next couple of gigs it it, it all comes mm. from you you know yeah. and that's your responsibility because everyone everyone is thinking about <laughs> what they bring and yeah. what they have and what they're going to do so. yeah 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 and in you, a sense it's selfish of us to think that they should be thinking of us <laughs> exactly oh yeah exactly exactly <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's like the, the dream that's sold to a lot of artists too, is just that for one, you'll be like an overnight sensation, which is not true. It is not true. (laughs) Even with artists who I've seen on, on like social media and stuff, for example, who to me just seem to have popped up out of the clearing and, you know, it's like, oh, wow, where did these people come from? they've actually been putting in work since they were children, yeah. you know, they're child <laughs> stars of some movie or something like that. So, so it's yeah, never an sure. overnight thing. It, it, it's years and years of hard work and time and failures and mistakes uh, yeah. and holding on to the little successes and building them up and making them bigger and bigger over time. So one of the, one of the myths that were sold is that. And then another myth I think is a, uh, and especially now with maybe social media is that a lot of people define themselves from their audience or based on their audience, mm. you know, whether or not yeah. it's, it's the validation that you get and that you feed off of or uh, the numbers or their reception or their response. You know, it's, it's just a lot of um, you feel, you feel almost this like unwritten pressure or unwritten expectation that you have to constantly appease the audience in every way. And yeah. as an entertainer, that must be kind of a hard thing to balance because yeah. your, your whole career is based on other people, yeah. <laughs> right? And yeah. being accepted or being received by some way in, in other people. But you have to still stay true to yourself and, and true to form and remember what your value is outside of of your audience's reaction or understanding of you yeah yeah for sure yeah i i i remember uh the first time i expressed how i was feeling a particular day and i was like oh i just feel really sad and no response (laughs) like no comments nothing at all and i was so I, I, I was so disappointed in that like yeah. oh so then that means I just always have to be happy because no one wants to see the sad side at they only want to see happy yeah and then you have to realize like I have to be me yeah and I can't wait for the applause like and I think even through the, all of this that's one of the biggest things like no one's applauding me at home they know me this it's mom and here she is again. <laughs> Why aren't you at work right now? <laughs> They're not going, oh, goodness. thank you, mom, for all the encouraging words. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? Stop asking me how I'm doing. <laughs> That's a big change. <laughs> so, we, have, we have two kids. So one, uh, we have a daughter, 21 years old. Hmm. And she is, you know, she's in school. We had to rip her out of school in the in the states mm-hmm. because of the lockdown, and so she she wasn't happy about that, obviously. And um, we want her to talk to us, but you know, she don't want to talk. <laughs> what do I need to say? How are you doing? Fine. Stop asking me <laughs> because I I love it. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? You okay? You okay? Yeah. You okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop asking me that. <laughs> and then we have a son who's nonverbal. 
mm-hmm. and can't tell us how he's feeling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's so you're, you're just really learning how to, you know, I have to see myself and continue to do what I believe I'm, I've been gifted to do. Mm-hmm no matter who's applauding Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's because that's the thing it's like if i'm just waiting for the applause if i'm just waiting for the the praise Mm -hmm. then this isn't real Mm -hmm. this Mm -hmm. is a facade this is Mm -hmm. sidad just trying to make a living being the happiness infuser Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. this has to be me my middle name is actually means happiness tt lola Mm. means happiness Mm. so i'm actually just living my name living Mm. my 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 what my ancestors have given me Mm -hmm. joy hope the encourager Mm -hmm. this is who i am it's just part of my work but Mm -hmm. i have to stay true to who i am no matter what where i am or how many people are looking at me Mm -hmm. if i go on if i go live on instagram or facebook and there's only one person watching I should be very happy with mm-hmm. that one person is watching mm-hmm. and I'm giving just as much joy, as much um, happiness as I would if there were thousands of people watching. Mm-hmm. Right. And I have to feel good about myself when someone's praising me or someone's trolling me. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, <laughs> and, and, and it's a, it's a hard line to walk. Right. So you're just, yeah, I'm good until someone tears me down. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But you want to be stronger than that, right? You want to have a stronger foundation than um, getting disappointed at not having as many views or somebody makes a comment and and it, you know, you shrink and, oh, okay, maybe I did something wrong there. No, you know, no. And, and that's not, that of course takes a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of hardship to build up, but that's what you have to remember that it's not all the glamour and glitz and you know it's not an uphill thing you know in the greater scheme of things hopefully yes but it's not linear it's not a a linear uphill thing that you know just because you went through something doesn't mean you're not going to go through something again (laughs) yeah (laughs) i'm sure you know that (laughs) hopefully hopefully that second wave is not coming through (laughs) no no (laughs) wear your masks Yep. <laughs> Stay inside. Yeah. So yeah. Have you been quarantining? It's well, funny I mean, I... That word quarantine, like seven months ago, was such a scary word to me. Like I yeah. thought of the movie and I thought of, oh my God, like <laughs> being locked in a room. It was a scary sounding word. Yeah. And yeah. now it's just like, so how's the quarantine? <laughs> like we talk about the weather. So true but I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm out a little bit more than I was. I was very, I was afraid to go out. Yeah. Um, but during the, um, graduation ceremonies, there were, there were a lot of youth that worked with me that were very sad about their graduation. Mm-hmm. So I did like drive, drive by. I, so I, yeah. I have like cool in the gang, um, celebration song playing oh, awesome. yeah. and I'm dancing at a distance. I've done yeah. that. Um, I've just, I've just tried to, you know, stay positive. And now that we can have like our bubble, I, you know, I have a group of friends that I, you know, social distance with that in our backyard mm-hmm. marketplace on Facebook has been incredible to build my backyard. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Just> like, nice. <laughs> building a backyard on a budget. So, yeah. so now we have like a fire table. So it's really Ooh. nice. So we can, you know, have nice, um, evenings outside without going to the beach and you know, yeah. things like that yeah yeah so yeah learning to learning to adapt to and adjust to where I am so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good I feel that yeah. I feel that I I've been kind of doing the same thing you know staying mostly to myself but but you have to see your friends at some point you know you you have yeah. to um and i've done social distancing hangouts and just that alone brings yeah. so much joy you know like with yeah. with your sisters and you know yeah. you, you get to laugh and and just act silly and you know like things that yeah. always used to bring you joy and that always will that can't be taken yeah, away for sure yeah 
But definitely looking forward to having, you know, conferences again and concerts mm. and, you know, I think we'll appreciate it a whole lot more when, it, when, when we get back to that. Mm. I feel like, you know, as, as a whole, we took it for granted that we were able to go out. We're able to go to a concert and we're all complaining about the price and things like that. Right. <laughs> or now I, just, I don't think mm. there's going to be a lot of complaining. Like, whoa, mm-hmm. you know? mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I, I feel like the arts will just go, you know, it'll, it'll bring back everything and more when we're able to do that again, because people will appreciate it that much more. Yeah. So you don't know what you have until it's gone. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think there is going to be a huge surge in the arts, but also a newfound yeah. appreciation for it because it's been artists and entertainers and, you know, people who create yeah. things for people to consume. It's been those kind of folks who have really been carrying a lot of people mm-hmm. on their backs, <laughs> yeah, myself included, much. you know, uh, yeah. as like just as a DJ, I've been so like, so amazed by what other DJs have been able to do for me and so thankful you know so so thankful to musicians just to artists in general they they've really been caring I think a lot and and not to you know that and people who work in healthcare who work in mental health care you know (laughs) who work in delivery services who work in retail in grocery services like providing really basic needs just those folks were definitely taken for granted definitely taken for granted (laughs) yeah so if it's it's funny because there's this but in a way i don't understand why people are still taking them for granted (sighs) essential workers you're like really you're complaining yeah (laughs) rules of going into a store and being able to purchase a necessity and the time like this, like, come on, like, yeah, oh, yeah. So, sometimes that frustrates me, like, we need to appreciate a lot more, how about we lock you down for another week without groceries, without being able to go out and see how you feel the next time you go, oh, well, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. think some people, some people's minds will never be changed, so you just have to, That's you it. know, That's it. let that go and, and focus on the ones that are, you know, thankful mm-hmm. and, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it it also starts from within, right? It really starts from within. Like you have to look at and assess yourself on where you've changed. But I agree. I, I agree. I, I think, you know, we also don't want to romanticize like how the world is going to be this better place when we come back because hopefully, yeah, but we don't know that. Um, <laughs> you know, we don't know that. And uh, you're right. Not everyone really is looking at it in the positive lens. I think, um, you know, we're speaking about this together and, and, we both sort of agree on these things. Uh, But another thing that has really been made clear to me is that um, people are really not on the same page. You know, we could all be going through the exact same kind of struggle and people are still really not on the same page about life, you know, and you just have to accept that, (laughs) you know. And and then just do, and do your, and find out what what your place is or where where do I fit into um, the solution to Mm -hmm. whatever problem arises in our community Mm -hmm. like right now with Black Lives Matter I was so overwhelmed with the information Mm -hmm. and the heartache and you hear these story story after story and you're just like you're absorbing it and it's it's breaking your heart and you don't Mm -hmm. know where to turn and then I finally had to sit down and go where do I fit into all of this? Mm-hmm. Because I, I know with, with my, with the way I, my personality is made up. I, if I take in too much heartache, mm-hmm. I, I just, I go into depths of despair and mm-hmm. I can't get out. So it's just like, what, what can I do? What can I do? Well, I found um, a historian. He doesn't claim to be a historian, but I would say he is. His name is Freddie Taylor, and he he started a program for youth called the Sankofa Club. Mm. And he had a five-day challenge called um, Before We Were Slaves, Mm. 
this pro this conference was so enlightening and just it just it just lifted me up so much to believe that you know what we focus so much on when we were slaves and because i'm american that's usually where we were we were full, we were slaves and now we're free there was a civil right movement and now we're still fighting mm -hmm. he said go back to what your ancestors contributed to, to the world and realize that we are kings and queens, mm -hmm. that we have been ruling the world from the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. And when you start connecting with your ancestors, you're going to see your future. Mm -hmm. You, If you don't have anything to connect with, you can't see how you can improve or move forward. Mm -hmm. All you see is this is where I'm at, or this is where I am. Mm -hmm. So that's basically, he became the cheerleader for a week telling us about you need to look up the moral the more tribe and what they contributed to the world do you know that we taught the greeks and you know so he was really like he was that and he was almost like sidet 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 the historic the historian right and so mm. it was it was so it was so encouraging to me mm. and then i found my place it's like you know what i i'm still here to lift children up to help them believe that they can make a difference in the world but if i can give them thought little nuggets of truth yeah about oh, yeah. race and about being part of and, and being um embrace your culture embrace mm -hmm. your difference be mm -hmm. proud of who you are do your research i'm going to build a generation help build a generation of children who see differences in a whole new light than mm -hmm. what their and then how their parents view um, diversity. Diversity is going to be something that's like, hey, we celebrate this every day. It's not a special time. Mm -hmm. It's not Black History Month mm -hmm. that we do our check mark. This mm -hmm. is like, this is every day. Every day we talk about our differences. We embrace our differences. We educate ourselves on how to speak about it. We create space for children to talk about race. Mm -hmm. And that's a big, I think that's the biggest problem. When it comes to how we raise our children to to be anti-racist, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like <laughs> if you want to talk about anti-racism, you have to start creating spaces to talk about race. Mm -hmm. And if kids aren't able to say, hey, mom, why is this person black without you scooping up your child and running away? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Come on, like they, then they think, oh, that's that's wrong because yeah. my parent like just shut it down, didn't have a conversation, <laughs> was afraid to even have the conversation in front of that person. Yeah. Even if they that that parent has to have the courage to go, hey, I'm so sorry, but I really this is a teaching moment for my child. I really want to talk about this. Yeah. Why, why, why do we feel like it's like the talk in a sense when we want to talk about race, talk about I can't hear you for, uh, oh, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yes. Do you hear me? I hear you now. Do you hear me? You hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know where we got cut off. So, <laughs> uh, you were saying, um, being able to turn a, a, a moment to talk about race into a teachable moment for a child rather than being yep. scared to bring it up. Yeah. You know? But even, so, in, even in the classroom, it should be a conversation, but you'd have to have the right people in the classroom or as presenters, yeah, as yeah. special guests to create that space. Yeah. But the, that the educator has to have that mindset as well. Yeah. They have to be educated. They have to be trained to say, hey, this is something we want to embrace. Mm -hmm. And it's not, and if you don't embrace it, and if you don't practice it, you're you're going to feel uneasy. You're going to feel nervous. Mm -hmm. um, even in the the uh, conference that I, the, the uh, workshop that I was part of, he says five minutes a day will keep miseducation away. He said, if you would just talk to your children for five minutes about Black history mm. 
and just like little nuggets of truth where they're not like, oh, here we go, it's another lesson. They're gonna be excited and they wanna hear more. Start with five minutes. Well, parents were coming back the next day, say I started with five minutes and 30 minutes later, they, they didn't wanna stop. They wanted to do activities. They wanted to learn a little bit more. Mm. And I think if we make it like this was not a lesson, this, mm-hmm. is, this is life, this is mm-hmm. a life lesson. You're gonna need this, right? It becomes something natural and organic and it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's not made up. It's not a tokenism, you know? So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that, that I feel like that's my part now. It's just like, I'm educating myself to be able to be that educator to educators <laughs> as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. So are you reimagining your role in, um, in the school system to be? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. Okay. How, yeah. What what kinds of things are you thinking? Are you thinking more speaking with teachers as well as children? I, I think I will always speak to children. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I'm going to be that. I, I always like, because I'm American, I, I watch Mr. Rogers all the time. And I always <laughs> want, I'm like, I want to be the black, <laughs> the black Rogers <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and the female Rogers of, yeah. you know, of, of this generation where it's just like nuggets of truth. Um, educators can use it, but I'm talking to the children. Mm. Um, children are absorbent and, yes. and parents and educators will listen when they realize that their kids are listening. Yeah, and this is something that has um, evolved even in my show before COVID. The kids come in, the teachers come in, and if they if they're not aware of my program, sometimes they come in when they hear the music, and they see all the flashy you know colors and stuff, and the DJ, and and I'm dressed like a kid basically. <laughs> they're like, oh, here we go, someone mm-hmm. trying to be cool for the kids. Mm-hmm seven eights come in and this is the tough crowd right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. seven eights <laughs> if it's i get cool crowd seven, eight, seven eights, then we're doing something right mm-hmm. saida i'm so sorry you froze after the seven eights i don't know if you can hear me Oh no. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. <laughs> okay. Sorry. It's it's my internet. It's not you, it's me. Oh. Um, it keeps going in and out. Okay. I see you moving. So yeah. Um so you were you were saying uh the last thing you said was if you can get through to the seven and eights. Yeah, so um, I find when the children are are absorbing or embracing the message, the parents and the teachers, um, they relax as well, and then they begin to listen. Mm-hmm. And I think you can see that even if you watch like a children's television network, mm-hmm. parents will put on a show, and if they notice that their child is like, repeating like that little nugget of truth or they're saying there are there or they're listening to a, a life lesson the parents will come along and they'll listen to you mm-hmm. and and that's I feel like that's my gift I'm not really there to educate an educator or a, a parent but mm-hmm. they will learn from my from um my stories and the way I interact with their child mm-hmm. So, so that's what I, that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I want to make the, I want to make my shows and my um, presentations um, so engaging for a child that the educator can take these ideas and, and, you know, implement them into their own programs and curriculum. Mm-hmm. Do you find, so, so that's something that, you know, I think is helpful to know. Um, because I, I was going to ask if, if do you find that, especially when it comes to something like educating about Black Lives Matter or educating around it or, you know, just incorporating it into the message that you want to send to your students. Um, yeah. Do you find that this is something that teachers and educators on the, the general scale that you have encountered 
Um, so I'm kind of speaking more by the numbers here. Is this something yeah. that the teachers care to also understand and integrate and change about their own classrooms? Like, do, do they care about this message in the classrooms, in other words? Before, before the protests, I feel, I feel that there were many that wanted to but didn't know how and they and they at times didn't have the support they needed to be able to continue that conversation like mm -hmm. how do i talk about race how do i talk about anti-black racism how do i talk about you know bullying in schools when it comes to race mm -hmm. i i feel i feel like there were a, there were many educators that wanted to do that but they didn't have that support where now that conversation's at the forefront. Mm -hmm. So now you need to talk about it. It is it is a necessity. You it's you can't get away from it. You can't mm -hmm. say, well, we'll just talk about it when it's a diversity day or mm -hmm. when it's a Black History Month um, mm -hmm. um, period. Like that, I feel like now is the time mm -hmm. for the educators that really wanted this to happen to to say, hey now what are we doing mm -hmm. and i want this in place now mm -hmm. so i i always see like that there's more good than evil mm. <laughs> and, and and i and i don't think that's a that's a bad thing you need people in life to see all the discrepancies but you also need to have the people that see the good mm -hmm. and, and and sometimes i struggle with that especially through all of this i i would say yeah but um and there's a time for me to be quiet about that because hey, there is there is there's inequality in in our community. There there is racism in our community, and it needs to be heard and it needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And then when we've addressed it, we also need the people that are going to come in for the all the people that are resisting the ah because mm -hmm. there are people that don't want to hear you shouting and don't want to hear you saying. This needs a change, mm -hmm. but they will listen to someone saying, "Hey, I have an idea," <laughs> right? Absolutely. And so, and so that's kind of that's kind of where I feel like I am, and there are educators that will will take on that mm -hmm. as well. So, yeah, my phone is going the the um. I think I'm losing power. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to charge. Yeah, all right. I'm at eight percent. So let me. Gotta figure that out. All right. There we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> We're back. We're safe for the next little while. Yeah, um, for a couple minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Um, good. Yeah, that is so important. Like I remember when I I went to the public school system here in London, and. Okay. And uh, part of it is, is, is definitely about having those conversations and it's also about representation. You know, like yeah. it, it is about representation. Like I, I don't think I had a non-white teacher until I got to high school. And even in high wow. school, there was like two black teachers that I can remember in the entire high school. And I don't remember seeing any, there, there was definitely not a person with a hijab, definitely not, uh, I don't think there was any other non-black teachers, I'm sorry, non-white teachers. And when kids are growing up in a system like this, it's not that that in itself is a recipe for disaster when it comes to race understanding. You know, yeah. but um, when kids are growing up in, in, and even when it comes to like sexism, for example, like there were, you know, a lot of male teachers in, in, in like certain departments. And, and even in my high school, it was actually a lot of male teachers. So mm -hmm. when kids are growing up, you know, and are being shaped in some very formative times of their lives uh, and not getting that kind of exposure to different races of people, different genders, different people, you know, like who, because the students were not really represented by the teachers, by the teaching body. You know, the students were definitely a lot more diverse than that. And yeah. um, 
speaking just from my own self, like that, I, now as I'm looking back, that for sure had certain impacts on the way that I subconsciously viewed myself um, as very much like an outsider, as very much, uh, you know, somebody who was not in the higher ranks of, of people, for example. And to have somebody come in and, you know, like yourself and say, listen, these topics and these subjects and these issues do matter. And you should, we should be encouraging students to think about these things, you know, maybe not have debates about them and, and, you know, write yeah. their, all of their, you know, final essays on this or whatever, but we should be encouraging them to think about these things, how they apply in the greater world, because it's, it's really important. Um, something that's being said over and over and over again these days, but it's true. Like it's, it's really important as the community changes, yep. different aspects of the community need to reflect that too. And that is not a bad sure. thing. You know, it is no, not, a, not. <laughs> it is not a bad thing. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And we need to, we need to see people of color in every position mm-hmm. and it needs to be, and it needs to be, it needs to be uh, the normal. It should mm-hmm. be something that it's, it's not like, oh, we have to look for, no. No. <laughs> like we're here. Looking. We're here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We're right here. Um, yep. so much of this has to do with like, like questioning the way that these systems work and, and the way that, you know, what is the hiring process like? What's going through the hiring officer's head when they're interviewing people who have, you know, different skin color, for example. Um, that's why like, that's why the, the school system and the education system is such a, um, like, so many layered elements go into it when you're trying to bring these kinds of issues to the table. You know, like you were saying, a lot of times these things get sort of just referred to the diversity campaign or Black History Month or that very small specified window of time where we do talk about this. But I know that the in, in most cases, I'm sure that the intention is to bring the conversation because there is absolutely no conversation going on so they're looking for ways to implement that and that's great but what i think you know non-people of color don't realize and especially non-black people uh when you want to talk about black issues or when you talk about black history month is that that's very othering at the same time you know to just regulate Black History Month, for example, to like a once a month thing where that that's when we focus on black people. Mm-hmm. And that's when we focus on all the struggles that they have had. It's kind of, it's it's so othering because, yeah. you know, yeah. all these communities. Yeah, even when it comes to even pride, it's just like, yeah. why should why should the LGBTQ2 plus community always feel like, hey, this is a month they get to celebrate like it's Christmas or, or a holiday or something. You're right. like, what? Yeah. Like it. Yeah, we should all be able to have those times of celebration, but we shouldn't all go into hiding after it's over. Yeah. And that's the problem. (laughs) It's like, yay, where are you? Where'd you go? Yeah. You know? (laughs) So. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it it needs to be, like, this is what normalization means. It it just means integrate us with the fabric of life every day. Exactly. You know, and that's what equality is really about. You know, exactly. that's what equality is really about. Like these, these issues. And on top of that, like, it's not Black History Month. It's history, right? It's world. Black yeah, history. Black history that is, was one thing I learned. That black history is world history. This yes. Is the always say, what is it? Black history is world history. Black history is world history. Yeah. It's history. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like how how come we learn yeah. about, you know, the founding fathers or confederation in history class, but we only learn about Canada's, well, we actually don't learn about Canada slavery. We, we actually, that's no, not taught don't. in schools. <laughs> but like, if we are to learn about it, we learn about the Underground Railroad. Um, mm-hmm. And we only learn about For that those people history, over like, there. For those people <laughs> over there, you know, yeah. but real history is the confederacy. 
you know, or confederation is what we call it in Canada. Yep. And, um, you know, maybe there will be a mention of the wars with like different Aboriginal, uh, you know, freedom fighters, but maybe, maybe in most maybe. cases, no. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it's, it's really this, like, it's funny how you see, uh, what is seen as like the neutral space. It's the same thing when it comes to talking about race and journalism, you know, it's like the political issue. So that's not neutral, you know, or having a black person come on camera to speak about uh, issues of racism. They're the ones being political, you know, they're the ones who might say something um, controversial. So, you know, you're not afforded that space to, to have a voice that is actually like, you, you know, that whole thing of objectivity, you want to yeah. be objective. What is objective? And are you saying that, you know, a, a black person can't be objective? They're coming innately with a bias. So you have to be careful around that, around their story. Wow. <laughs> so it, it goes deep, you know, it goes really deep. And one of the places that it really starts in is in education, is in the schools. Uh, yep. Because that's people's first contact with, that's children's first contact with outside ideas and the outside yep. world, really, right? Yep. So, yeah, it goes really deep. So your work is incredibly yeah. important. <laughs> incredibly important. Our work is incredibly important because we all have a place in this world and we all are contributing to this conversation in our own creative way. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yeah, I appreciate being able to share it with you. Um, yeah. yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that your experience can really open people's eyes to and the work that you do is just what you're doing all the time. You know, you're, and especially in, and trying to connect with children and connect messages of positivity, but also bringing in education that they wouldn't really receive very well in their textbooks or from their teachers who may not be aware of all these different needs that children have. Um, True. It's like, it's, it's great to be able to speak with you about it. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. It, yeah. it actually uh, encourages me to know that someone, you know, is listening and wants to hear from me. So thank you. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I see what you're doing on social media. And I like, I always thought as soon as I first came across you, I always thought, man, that, that woman has like a different kind of energy, you know, <laughs> to be able to yeah. do all of that. Like you do not meet people like that often at all at all so well, thank you big props to you thank you and i'm learning to be my own cheerleader that's right <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right that's what you gotta do yeah. be your own number one fan yeah <laughs> it makes a difference it's a so big help true.